Hi, I'd like to talk about JavaScript today and HTML, CSS, and making websites using all of that. Um, so, you know, I have an example that I've covered in a couple of the videos earlier. And essentially, it's a, sort of an online store, you know, and these are maybe our products here. And as you tap on a product or click on a product, you know, it opens up a detail view of the product and you can close it. Okay, let's talk about the structure of this, right? Um, I'm going to go get the inspector here. And you can see in the inspector that, um, you know, when I open up the body tag, I have a list right here. And this UL is the container for all the products that you see right here. Okay, and each one of these products is a list item, right? So here's the first one and the second one and the third one, right? Okay, and each one of these list items is the same. You know, essentially the contents of these list items um, are exactly the same for each list item. So this first one is made up of, you know, an LI tag, an A tag, which contains an image and two divs, right? And then if I examine the second one here, it's an anchor tag, which contains an image tag and two divs, right? So these are all the same. The only thing that's different between them is the, the you know, what's inside the tag. So for example, the image tag here has a different name for the picture. And then the name right here, the actual, you know, title that we see at the bottom here is different, right? And the price is different. But otherwise, everything else is the same. The structure is exactly the same, right? So the code that I have here has a lot of repetition, right? There's, I'm duplicating a lot of stuff, you know, like all these list items are duplicated. All the A tags are duplicated. All the image and these two divs right here are duplicated along with their class names, right? And some of the other features. You know, there's just a little bit of stuff that changes with each list item. So, you know, the source attribute changes, the name changes, and the price changes. Those are the only things that change. Actually, I guess this, this href here changes, right? Um, so, uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of repetition there, right? Let's look at the details. So when I when I tap or click on one of the products, you know, it opens in a window like this or kind of on top of the whole screen. And this detail view is a div. So this is the div for the first product, right? And you can see I have one of these for each product. So for every product that I have in the in the UL here, right, every one of these list items, there's a corresponding div at the bottom here that has, um, you know, all the information for the details. And, and all of these are the same also. So, you know, each one of these is exactly the same as the other one, except for the little, little bits that change, right? So you can see inside this, I've got a div, and then, uh, you know, I need this outer one to cover the page, and then the inner one actually has the content in it. And then inside that div, there's the close button, there's an image, and then there's another div with some text detail, right, with the price and things, right? So really, all of these are the same, except, again, the text for the, the description and the title and the text for the... Um, for the price are the only things that 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 really change, right? And maybe the image name and the and the the ID name, right? Okay, so you know what we'd like to do is we'd like to get rid of all that repetition, right? It would be a lot easier for us to um, to work with our web pages and you know you know you know be able to make changes and you know make more reliable web pages, right? You know, if every time we duplicate one of these, if we make a mistake then, you know, we're stuck, like, looking through this to find the mistake, right? And we have all these different things to look through. If we only had one block of code, there's only, there'd only be one place to look for the mistake, right? Um, another thing is that, uh, you know, if you have to make a change, right, I'll have to make a change to every one of these divs, right? So if I have, you know, nine of these, then I have to make, you know, nine changes, right? So that's a lot of work. Um, and then, you know, it, it gets even worse when I have two sets, right? So here's another set. Like if I want to make a change here, then I got to make a change, you know, all the way down the row, right? Um, if I want to expand my work, then I have to duplicate a large block of code. So if I want to add another product, then I have to, you know, duplicate this whole block here 
right? So, you know, it really, it really um, helps us out if we, if we don't have to repeat ourselves, right? If we don't have to repeat the code blocks here and use just one code block and have the computer duplicate it for us, right? And um, that's a problem that's already been solved and we can leverage the solutions that other people have come up with um, and we'll call it templating. So a template is the block of code that makes up one element, right? And it could be this whole block for this div or this whole block here for this list item and everything inside it, right? And the way the template works is it gives us um, properties or variables to replace the content elements like the price and the name and the image and maybe the ID or the href here, right? And we can fill those things in from outside. And every time we create a template, we can fill these details in and then add that instance of the template or that text to our to our page, right? So originally we only have, you know, one copy of the template, right? And we're just duplicating it and filling in the information, okay? So, so that's the that's the goal of um, of this series of videos, okay? And um, you know, well, it'll, this will go through a couple videos, right, before we're done. But uh, let's get started on this, right? So, what I'd like to do first is I'd like to look at the information that I have here and make. Um, you know, store it someplace where, you know, the details like the price and the name and the description, right, where we have that stored for later so we can use it when we need it, right? Um, you know, in other words, like I want to pull the information out of these templates here and store it somewhere else, and then that way I can make a template without the information, right? So, uh, so let's get started on that, right? Um, I'm going to use my project here, and you can get this project off of GitHub, right? So you can just search for my GitHub account here. Um, I'm going to go to GitHub there and search for WNM250, okay? And uh, this is mine right here. It says Soggy Bag WNM250. And these are the these are the projects I have for that class. Um, this project is actually in the class 10 folder. So if you go to class 10 right here and get the folder called store example, that's where I'm going to start. Okay. And um, you know what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this folder and I'll put my completed one in class 11, but you can start at class 10. Okay. So, um, so I'll, I'll put it in here. And there's a copy of my folder there, right? And this is where I'm going to begin, okay? Now, let's take a quick look at the files here. So in this, in this project here, um, and you could look at it here actually too. Um, maybe I'll look at it this way. In this um, project here, I've got um, uh, index HTML. So it's just one HTML page. And then there's a shopping cart JavaScript just to run our shopping cart. It's kind of just a simple script to pop the shopping cart open and list the items in the cart. And then there's a folder full of images, right? I have included um, jQuery here. You could link to jQuery on the CDN, um, but uh, sometimes I'm working offline. So when I'm working offline, I, I use this file here. So I'm linking to that in my file, but you could link to any copy of jQuery you wanted, right? Okay, so it's really pretty simple. There's not a lot to this, okay? Um, so the first thing I want to do, and I'd, I'd also like to organize this project a little bit better, right? So we're, we'll, we'll do that along the way. So the first thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to open up a new, this new project here in, that I added to class 11, okay? And um, I'm going to open it up in brackets. And here we are any moment now. Yeah, there we go. So there's my project there, right? It's got cart and images and index and jQuery, right? And what I want to do is I want to make a new file. And this file will be a JavaScript file, and it will be the data that we're going to add to our project. So this file is just going to have, you know, just the information that describes the products, their images, their prices, their names, their descriptions, maybe ID numbers, and any other information we need, okay? So I'm going to call this data.js, okay? And I'll save it into the folder here. We'll organize the files later, but I'll just save this into the folder here. And, and there we go, right? So it's a JS file. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable here called data, and then 
I'm going to set the value equal to an array. Okay, so I'll just make the square brackets there, and now data is an array. And what I need to do is I need to create an item for each product that I have. Okay, so and so if each product has multiple pieces of information associated with it, it's got a name, a description, a price, an image, and maybe an ID number. Okay, so um, each item in the array needs to group all those things together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make each item in the array a JavaScript object. So if I had three products to work with, you know, I'd have three objects in the array. So you'll notice the syntax here. I begin with the curly bracket, end with the curly bracket. That's my array. And every item in the array is separated by a comma. Okay. So I've got three items here, and they're each separated by a comma. And then each JavaScript object is defined by the curly braces. Okay, so there's a beginning curly brace and an ending one. And inside these curly braces, the objects can have properties. So what we can do here for the objects, right, is we can say ID colon, and I can say this is going to be ID number one, right? That'll be product number one. And then I can say its name is colon, and I'll call it cat fuzz, okay? Right? So, so each object now follows a similar syntax to the array, right? Um, each object has a property name followed by the colon and its value, and then each property name um, value pair is separated by the comma. So here's your first name value pair, comma, second name value pair, and the, the name and value are separated by the colon, okay? Um, so there we go, right? So, so I've got, you know, object number one in the array, comma, object number two, comma, object number three. Now, all of our objects are going to be the same, okay? I'm going to do this to make this a little bit easier to read. Like, as soon as I start typing more of these, they're going to get run off the edge of the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line return here, and that's okay. We can do that inside of our object. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line return after each... Um, after each uh, property name like this. So that way when I read it, the square bracket will be up here on its own line, and then the curly braces beginning an object will be here, and then all the things within that object will be each on their own line, each property and value, right? And I should have a comma at the end of each line except for the last one, right? And then I'll do the same thing with these objects here like this, and I'll put the last um, square bracket at the end there, okay? And so like this will give me a good structure so I can read it easily, um, you know, product number one, ID, name, you know, and then maybe I'll add a description. So I'll put a comma here and say, I'll just shorten that to DESC, right? And I'll say, um, hurling hairballs of sonic Sonic Doom. Okay, there we go, right? So that's a good description. And then that's probably worth, uh, let's give it a price, right? Um, for prices, I'm just going to use a decimal number. Um, how about 102.99, right? Okay. Um, and then I'll worry about formatting prices with the dollar sign in, um, in my code, but I'll just give this a decimal number, okay? Um, so there we go. There's my description. Oh, you know what? I probably need an image too. Let's make the image here. And um, my images are, I'll have to go look that up, right? My images are in the, um, the images folder here, and I, I've just named them 01, 02, 03 JPEG, right? So, so what I'll do here is I'll, I'll make this a string, and I'll say images folder slash 01 dot JPG, okay? And that'll be the image for this product. You'd probably, I'm just making this up as I go along, you'll probably want to match the name of the product with you know, the description and the correct picture, right? So, and the correct price. Um, but anyway, this is what I'm going to do. So, so I've got my object here, right? I've got each property, colon, value, comma, property name, colon, value, comma, right? So this is all correct. I don't need a comma after the last one. And then this curly brace here contains the entire object for the first product. And then I'll have a comma, and then I'll have my next product here. So, this is the next product. Don't miss the comma there before the last product, right? So it's, it's going to look like this. 
And now you can see this is the beginning curly brace and the ending one. And then for this product, I'll want to have the same set of properties, right? So actually, I can just copy this whole block here and paste it between these two curly brackets, right? Okay. And then maybe I'll call this product number two. And I don't even know what it, what, which one this is. Let's call it um, something fuzz. Uh, uh, sounds weird. How about that? So that'll be the description. And then I'll give it a price of $112.99 and then make it image number two. Okay. Um, actually, so yeah, so I think that looks good, right? So you're going to repeat this process once for every product. Okay. Um, I have, I think I have nine in the folder here. Okay. So just give each one of these a name a description and a price and then match it up with an image right and you can give each a unique id number if you have real products you might give this like your product id whatever that is you know maybe every product has a special id number right you could use that here okay so make sure you have nine of these and then check your syntax and make sure that your syntax is correct right so you know we gotta have the colon between the properties and then a comma after each one of um one of these property value pairs, right? And then after each object here, we need to have a comma, okay? So follow that through and then fill this out so you have nine, um, nine objects describing at least nine of your products. And if you have more products, you can do more, okay? But make sure you do at least nine. That'll be good practice, you know? Um, and anyway, thanks for watching, and then we'll continue this in the next video.